Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about level one. They are a brand that I talked about earlier this month with regards to network devices and I do think it's something I want to continue talking about because when I asked them to send me some switches and they sent me that little tiny PoE number and they also sent that big old brass end one that was covered in ports and 10 GBE, they also included this. This is one of their power over ethernet IP cameras because I do a lot of NAS and I do a lot of surveillance and it's kind of they must have known what I'm into and so they sent the camera. There you go, the end, Finn. No, that's not the end of the video, come back. Now, this is the FCS5092. Real catchy name, but for the rest of the video, we're just going to call it the Gemini. That's what they call it, and it is an outdoor IP camera for business. It's uh, weatherproof, it's PoE powered, and it's IP68 rated. Now, I'm going to talk about that later on, what that means. What that means is it's for outdoors and it's for business. I'm also being told that it is supported by OMVIV, which means that it should be visible via our Synology and QNAP in a test area just over there, so we can test this camera out with their respective surveillance platforms. So, what can I tell you about this device? Well, first and foremost, it's one of the few camera, is it, cameras I've ever had here on the channel in terms of modern IP cameras, that internet protocol cameras for surveillance, that looks super retro it looks a bit 80s 90s in terms of i've seen a lot of dome and traditional cctv cameras but straight away when we do see the design that i'll show you in a second you'll see what i mean about the kind of shape that they've gone for there now it retails for about 150 to 200 quid as you kind of get for business level uh, poe cameras and certainly ones that arrive with a, a weatherproof rating that high in terms of its compression technique of the camera and recordings, it can be, there's a number of different uh, file formats and codecs that you can use. But in terms of compression technique, it is H.264 and 265. So 264 is the kind of bigger, denser one, but you can go for a much more modern codec in 265 as well. It's a 5 megapixel camera with a different lighting adjustment array built into it, as well as dynamic um, range um, width compression so it can actually record a better density of field and it does already have LEDs built into the front for night vision up to 50 meters during the night which we're not going to be able to test even in this office environment it's quite a well lit room even at night it's not the darkest of rooms so it's going to be very hard to bench test that later on in our software overview of this camera in terms of software it also arrived with software uh, included but it's not great I wouldn't advise using it, to be honest. I mean, the one that it seems to arrive with, I'm not even sure if it's their own or a third-party software. There's a CD included. Um, I would recommend utilizing it with another NVR or CCTV system, and I would certainly recommend a NAS with their own uh, QVR Pro for QNAP and surveillance station for Synology. Just make sure you've got the camera licenses. Now, if we open this bad boy up, we've got a cleaning cloth there for the lens, something I've never seen before on an IP camera. Uh, on top of that, if we remove the rest of it, we have an Allen key for uh, uh, attaching the screw fixings, and you'll see a little bit more uh, what that's for later on. We've also got that CD that's got our software, the utility, and again, it's got a guide in there for setting it up for the first time, but you're not really going to use a CD for that, let's be realistic. Uh, there's lots of online tutorials on their own website, Level 1's website, little dated, but all the information is there along with all the drivers, and they do stay on top of that as well as a quick start installation guide which got loads of information in different languages of how to set the device up for the first time but this is only related as far as installing the device on uh, a pc or mac system if you're going to install it on a third party software or hardware provider and again nas is as well then you're probably going to have to use their own user interface and all you're going to need really then is the login and it should be found on the network but we'll find that out more in the software overview We've also got um, something I've seen before. This is a sticker that you attach to the wall. Bring that closer to the camera so the light doesn't interfere with it too much. And this is what you stick to the wall to put the screw holes in and the drill holes so you can warm out this and get it right the first time rather than knackering up the wall and putting loads of holes in it. And at the bottom, we have got a bracket there for the internals of the device uh, when you wall mount it and the cabling. There's your lot for the box. And we have the camera in question. As I say, quite a dated retro look. I kind of, I think I did graphics for this channel that had a camera that didn't look too unlike this. I'm used to quite round cameras as well, but again, it's on a complete bracket. It can be moved, 
but again this is not an automated movement feature it's not mo it's not motored and you will have to undo the screws and fix it into place that light there is playing havoc there in the background um we've got this little thing on the top that if you remove the screw from the top the actual cover for the light is actually a little bit more covered but there's not much more than that the leds are built into that black portion there at the front you can't really make them out right now on here and that is that five megapixel camera right there um on the rear of the device we can see all of the fixings there all inside it's a very enterprise level metal array they're built into the back and we have got the uh, power over ethernet connector there the LAN port they are built into the rear along with an injector there as well so do bear that in mind if you are using a poe injector so in other words if you're not using um, a power over ethernet enabled switch or the distance is too great you can use a power um, injector there with a mains power outlet if you choose or use multiple power uh, connectors that allow you from a poe switch to power a device like this now on the base we've got our login credentials good luck knocking those down and you know filming me when i do the software overview but the camera itself is pretty enterprise that is not the lightest camera i've ever seen it doesn't need to be because it's warm mounted and i'll be honest if i was about to do something a little bit spurious inside a business and i was worried about being seen and this saw me i think i'd be a little bit concerned um now in terms of that weatherproofing it's worth highlighting that um with uh, ip68 it means it is waterproof up to a depth of a meter for 30 minutes now i know you're not going to be dipping this in water that's ridiculous the reason for that is for sustained water flow or in the case of flooding or anything like that that's an area where um, having long-term water protection and particularly certified long-term water protection can be very advantageous uh, on top of that it's also dust proof and that's the six in six eight so ip six is the dust and eight is the water i've got a whole video coming up about that sort of thing um but apart from that the device itself is fairly clear i mean right now we've got our screw there for dismantling the device and if we look quite carefully you can see that panel they're built into the base that one there that will allow us to install an SD card into this to have localized recording patterns, but that's not really a long-term solution. And that's why I do strongly recommend IP cameras to be used in conjunction with network video recorders, CCTVs, even DVRs, if you've got the right cable and transfer cables, but predominantly network attached storage. So I am looking forward to seeing if this camera is compatible. I've never really utilized level one beyond network devices. So it's gonna be interesting to see if this is going to be as good as some of our Rio Link and Axis and Hikvision cameras over there in the control area. But apart from that, look at the design side of things. And at that price point for an enterprise level camera, I'm quite impressed. I'm not going to say it's the best looking camera I've ever seen. I think it's a little dated in terms of its design. And I know a camera doesn't need to have some sort of aesthetic appeal in the modern age. And it needs to be intimidating. So I think this does look like a serious piece of kit. But with a non-rotational base and pan tilt zoom not being on the table. So this is a fixed angle. This may not be the right camera for you. But I'm going to wrap things up here. I'm not going to ask you to make a final judgment until we've done some software overviews. Uh, we're not going to use its own software. I was going to do a software overview of its own software. But it's just not that great. What I'll do is I'll run it through some NASs, see about compatibility, and then maybe go from there. But maybe you've got some questions about this. Maybe you've owned a level one IP camera before and you've got something to add to the fray. Do let me know. But otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more about different IP cameras that are compatible with different NAS brands. And I'll see you next time.